close your eyes and watch your breath. Breathe deeply a couple of times. See how deep breathing feels. If deep breathing feels good, keep it up. If you don't like deep breathing, you can change. Shorter breathing, faster, more shallow, heavier, lighter. Try to see what the body needs right now. And try to see what the mind needs, too. Because the mind needs to care in feeding. We look after the body so much in the course of the day, but we very rarely look after the mind. The mind is just kind of left to its own resources. It does the work for the day, and then when it's done with its work, it goes running around to whatever. Immediately grabs its attention and gets itself into a lot of trouble that way. So we have to train the mind. So that when we make up our mind that something needs to be done, the mind stays with it. And we can learn at the same time how to make it a pleasant thing to do that particular job. This is an important part of all the practice, because not everything in the practice is going to be easy. And so you have to learn how to motivate yourself, how to get yourself happy to be doing this kind of work. So if the mind is rebellious, you ask yourself, okay, what does it need? What is it looking for? Which way is it going off wrong? For example, if you get discouraged, okay, you can bring it back and think about all the good you've done in the past, that you're not a totally worthless person, you've got a lot of good to yourself. It starts getting fixated on the fact that the body is beginning to age. You remind yourself, okay, this means that the mind itself needs to be trained. We can't focus on the body so much. You've got to focus on the mind. Because the mind is what's going to take you where you go next. You leave the body behind, and then your consciousness just goes with the craving. It ends up in a new spot. And the quality of your mind is going to determine a lot of where that new spot is. So you've got to really look after your mind. And in the meantime, you want to make sure you don't suffer through this process. Aging, illness, and death are no fun. But you can learn how you don't have to suffer from them. That's an important skill. You know, they talk about replacing parts of the body so the body can live forever. That's a total delusion. Once something is born, it's going to die. But as for the mind, it just keeps going and going and going. So you learn how to accept the fact that the body's got to die, but the mind doesn't have to die along with it. In fact, it won't die. It'll just go along with it wherever it goes next, in line with its craving. So you've got to train it to keep things under control, because otherwise the mind can create a lot of suffering for itself. The suffering that comes from people outside is nothing compared to the suffering that the mind piles on top of itself. So that's what you've got to learn how to train yourself to avoid, how to step away from those kinds of thoughts, how to counteract those kinds of thoughts when they come up when they're strong. This way you can protect the mind so it doesn't need to suffer, because we live in a world of aging, illness, and death, of separation. These things are all around us. And there's so much in the world that's beyond our control. So learn how to take what it is in your control and use it as a path to the end of suffering. That's the best that any human being can do, and it's a, it's a great achievement when you can do it. So look after your mind first thing. Give it first priority, because the state of your life is going to depend on the state of your mind. Your aging, illness, and death, how you handle that, is going to depend on your mind. You can choose to focus on things that will cause you to suffer, or you can focus on things that will lead to the end of suffering. That's your choice. So make the choice well. <laughs>